Welcome everybody to Pop Culture. I am Scott. I'm Jason. And I'm Monica. And welcome, welcome. Nah, that was bad. Welcome to Halloween Horror Week here at Pop Culture. This week we're presenting you three of the finest slices of horror film you've ever tasted. Gazed upon. <laughs> Gazed upon. Look into them. Uh, so we each thought it'd be cool. We each picked a horror film uh, to uh, talk about this week, leading up to, of course, my personal favourite day of the year, Halloween, mm -hmm. where all, all the creeps come out to play, and it doesn't feel so. It feels like you need to be watching a scary movie. It's good. Yeah, there's something and coming about Halloween, and it's sort of spooky kind of way. I love it. Yeah. Are Absolutely. you saying it's the only time of year you feel like you belong, Scott? That maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Halloween and Foxmas, they're my two, <laughs> my two go-tos. <laughs> it's the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, Foxmas. It's the sex holiday. Yeah. Uh, You've got to make it the longest night of the year. All right. <laughs> but getting Foxmas cards for your friends is just weird. It is. It would be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to know them really well. Really well. <laughs> intimately. <laughs> right. So first up, we have Jason's pick for Halloween Horror Week, which is, of course, the amazing, the great, an absolute cult classic, actually. Mm. Neil Marshall's 2002 Dog Soldiers. Yes. And uh, it was a surprise when I saw it at the time, and it still stands up because it was... Uh, one that wasn't really well promoted and you sort of stumbled across it when it was released or a few years after it was released and it's still hard to get. It is. <laughs> what a choice. I'm I'm so glad to talk about this movie. <laughs> I am as well. It's so much fun. <laughs> is, this, is this the first time you've seen it? It is the first time that I saw it and thank goodness because I've been missing this movie in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it, it yeah. gave me everything I wanted. I remember um, Empire Magazine, so I would have been like probably like 13 when it came out in Australia, out of guess. And I had Empire Magazine did a feature article on it. And I remember looking at the pictures and being like, this looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I like begged and nagged my mother to take me to see it because it was MA. So you had to go with, a, uh, with an adult <laughs> and um, begrudgingly. Uh, took me to see it and was utterly mortified, but I thought it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, sort of got that, how would I describe it? It, it? It's a pure werewolf movie in essence, which is great. We, we sort of get werewolves treated quite badly over time, and this one mixes that nice sort of uh, predator-style, you know, soldiers out there fighting something that's a bit beyond them so it, it's got shades of that in it but for me it actually works better than predator so uh <laughs> you mean the I same because all the characters are likable <laughs> well they're more real characters <laughs> yes and um it, it's just a little bit more integrated across the whole uh arc of the story so it, it works a lot better in terms of characters and um yeah, it does. It, it, it does. It has to sort of, I guess, recognize Predator in so, a lot of ways to uh, go the, from the the Machismo soldier movie to the the inexplicable happening. <laughs> yeah, that and the views from the werewolf views on everyone, and uh, you know, sort of how it's filmed in a lot of ways. But to me, it actually comes together much better because it doesn't have to rely on the machoism of the. American soldiers. It's more of these uh, sort of gritty, cockney, <laughs> real soldiers, if you want. So, you believe them a bit more. Oh, they're not absolutely. just like, they're not just roided up <laughs> guys in tank tops. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, they're talking about what scares them and it's like spiders and watching soccer and things like that. So it's really unusual uh, points that make them a lot more realistic and that's yeah. one of the great things. Yeah, you spend so much time with them and you really, 
become emotionally invested in all of them and you like them. So once the movie actually starts moving and we're introduced to our monsters, it makes it that much more impactful. And they're, they're all actually, like, genuinely funny. Like, <laughs> some of the dialogue is really funny. Yeah, it is. From, like, um, Sean Pertwee is the, the, the very um, rough as guts sort of, um, you know, sergeant. Mm. Through to the just like ragtag group, I think the most serious one is probably Cooper, which is Kevin McKidd. Yeah. <laughs> the rest are all pretty like spoons, pretty funny. <laughs> I, I, I like Spoon. He was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Marshall always explained it as that he wanted to basically do Zulu with werewolves. Okay. Yeah. 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 So he's a, so so yeah. It, it makes a point of it by having I think it's I think it's actually Spoon who talks about Zulu and like he does. and um, yeah. So it was his uh, his tribute to Zulu was what he <laughs> how Neil Marshall describes it. <laughs> his yeah. horror movie tribute to Zulu. Mm. Mm. One of the best things about this movie, um, and for me, I love it because it, it always brings tension in, um, is that a lot of it takes place inside this abandoned house. And for me, because you get to know the landscape, you get an understanding of where all the rooms are and where everyone is, it just drives that tension forward with the story because the werewolves are outside, we have our soldiers inside, and they're trying to sort of like create this sort of um, defence mechanism within the house. And that to me is always really exciting to watch. Mm. I, I love it when movies do that. Which which also has like a, a, an amazingly good and rewarding story payoff too. In that like, oh, oh, oh yeah, it's awesome. their house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was such a good reveal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like it plays with that. Obviously, a werewolf's a person. Yeah, exactly. And the character of Megan tries to explain that to all the soldiers, saying, you know. They are good, decent people. You know, just this horrible thing happens to them once a month. <laughs> Where they have to hunt and kill and do all of these things. And you definitely see that from her side. Mm. Yeah, they get they they stumble into this situation rather, unfortunately. Or or are set up actually. They're set up. No, they're set up. Yeah, it's probably one of the it's a shame that it uses exposition to establish that because I thought mm. Was would have been really nice for it to just sort of been revealed in some like way, that, purely accidental, or yeah, or just a, a basic you know inference to it, rather than the actual exposition of having you know, to have um, Liam Cunningham lay it out in his yeah. most ang angry Liam Cunninghamness. <laughs> I was about to say you have the Onion Knight sort of tied back, looking imperiously at the camera, being like, "We know he has something to do with it, but you know, come on." <laughs> Because I think if it did that, it would just add to another reveal, mm. and you'd, you'd get an even better sense of uh, not not really plot twists as such, but sort of surprises, I'd say, as it goes through. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. but it's certainly full of them. Like, um, <laughs> and it's it's uh, no one is kind of safe. No. no. No, like I thought at the beginning of the film when the sergeant sort of encountered the werewolf and has his guts spilled open, I was just like, oh, he's a goner. I was not expecting him to go so soon. But, um, you know, he got to hang on a little bit longer. But you Nothing immediately... a bit of crazy blue can't fix. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's like you said, no one is safe. You don't know when everyone's anyone's going to get killed off. It could be any at any point in this movie. And they'll do it brutally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of them go out in really unfortunately like horrific ways. Yeah. Again, poor spoon. <laughs> yeah. There is no spoon. <laughs> That's like I think it's a, it's still one of those like best like heroic like fuck you moments where he's like, I hope I give you the shits. <laughs> <laughs> Also, considering it's sort of a budget film, ultimately the uh, werewolf designs really impressive. They're great, aren't they? It's, it's yeah. different enough to sort of, and I think it's been copied since. Mm. Like, yeah, I, I'm sure Underworld slight, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Underworld does have a very similar looking werewolf and sort yeah. of idea to it now. Um, yeah. Probably a little lend to the howling there, but it's definitely, yeah, definitely. its own design. But um, 
Yeah, they were, they were really impressive. And I think that was one of the things that blew me away at the time because I'd seen so many poor werewolf movies prior mm. and mm. it sort of made me think maybe people can't really do them properly. It's, you know, last good ones before that I'd seen was um, American Werewolf and... Um, the Howling. <laughs> the Howling, yeah. They, they well, were the, the only ones that stood out. Yeah. The, well, both are really great. Oh, both are really but, good, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I mean also just like, like American Werewolf is very sparing with the the use of a werewolf. It's it's more the transformation yeah. that people think about, like the actual the, the wolf creature itself is used very sparingly. Yeah, and also I guess with the creature designed for this film, they're so big and they're physically imposing. Like to me, that's what I appreciated the most. They're actual really scary monsters. They're not quite werewolves. They almost have this almost, I guess kind of slender man look to them as well. <laughs> it's long arms and legs. <laughs> and, um, it's like it was a, 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 this is a low budget film. They only had one head. <laughs> oh, one to go around. <laughs> one head to go around. So they had a couple of body suits, but only the one head. So you, uh, there's like one shot where you, the werewolves are in the, in the corridor together. And it's basically like split frame because they had to move the head off. And <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So like, but what a great way to make do. Oh, you, you couldn't tell. Watching it, you'd be like, you don't need it. Like, it's so, mm. it's it's great having them like in behind the boards and sneaking yeah. up. And then that great reveal where it's above the bed is, uh, if you're watching our YouTube video, the one right behind Jason there is like startling when you see it in its all its glory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And the one um, that was hiding in the back of the... Um, of the car as well. You don't see it, but you're just like, oh, he's screwed. <laughs> yeah. The breath. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, a great breath. moment. Oh, so good. And he's I think... Like, um, on his face. <laughs> yeah. I think it absolutely um, cemented Neil Marshall's incredible uh, talent and directing career straight off the bat to go from this straight into The Descent, which is I, uh, on a lot of best horror movies ever lists for a good reason. Yeah, he also did um, The Centurion, which is a really good film. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Uh, some of the better episodes of Game of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> the Battle of Blackwater and uh, Watchers on the Wall. Yeah, Battle of Blackwater uh, is one of the best episodes ever. <laughs> that unfortunate Hellboy remake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, everyone's allowed to have a step. Yeah, everyone's allowed to have a misstep. Uh, and I actually really like Doomsday, which was kind of his uh, British uh, attempt at like a punk Mad Max. I really enjoy. I really enjoy that. <laughs> but we uh, never got Dog Soldiers too. No, you're mentioning that. But... Yeah, it's been languishing since 2004. <clears throat> what would you do with the sequel? Would you have to sort of have an entirely brand new cast, or they were sure. talking about Kevin McKidd coming back and stuff like that? And um, there was a I, I I think there was like something to do with werewolf DNA, <laughs> like that word being thrown around a bit which i don't appreciate too much i like the sort of it sort of leans towards the supernatural angle with like the silver and stuff and i'm okay with that yeah you don't need to sort of have the element of um scientific intervention um mm. like what if, they if i believe werewolf you don't need to convince me <laughs> yeah exactly and that's a mistake that the film doom made which we re um, reviewed a few weeks ago with the rock you know you didn't have to have this sort of like forensic archaeology slant when the game was like it opens the pits of hell yeah that's perfectly yeah. fine <laughs> <laughs> that is cool with it so yeah they, they even made a poster for it which was dog soldiers fresh meat oh, that's a good <laughs> um, yeah great right yeah, there's a really poster that went out and everything and then it just never got off the ground they just it just it just never took off oh what a pity because i'd like to see kevin mckinnon more things because i think he's such an underappreciated actor <laughs> he's just living it up on Grey's anatomy <laughs> yeah, he deserves so much more than that like once again i'm gonna talk about my complete love of hbo's rome so <laughs> it's a good show it's great <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's i mean yeah he deserves more. And this and this movie does, like, for all the crappy werewolf movies that get, like, 40,000 sequels. <laughs> the one decent one doesn't, yeah. But maybe that's what makes it special. Maybe it hasn't been tainted or tarnished. Yeah, I actually, I, I sort of like the idea it doesn't get a sequel personally because it is a self-contained story. Yes. Um, and, yeah, we'd be just taking werewolf lore to another story i don't know 
how many characters you could utilize beyond who's left. So it's it's a really weak link to make a sequel to. It's so yeah, because there's only yeah. like it's a, it's a sole survivor type film. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you have the primary antagonist, which is um, that Ryan guy played by Liam Cunningham and Cooper facing off at the end, and that completes the story. And with this like fantastic little tragic coda where it's like the newspaper clipping and it's like it's so <laughs> overshadowed by the soccer score. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh what a dig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But interestingly, I was reading some of the trivia on it was uh, Simon Pegg was almost in this. Really? Oh, yeah. Um would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah, but he was asked by Edgar Wright not to be so that uh, Shaun of the Dead was the first film. Mm. Well, so, I mean, I'm not upset about that. No, no, I, no, he, no, no. He, it's just he, it's oddly, oddly, he can he can be quite dramatic too, old uh, Simon Peck. Yeah, he can. I mean, just look at his um, Scotty on the Star Trek films. He's he actually did a really good job. <laughs> he's, in all of them. he's still pretty funny in that. Though. <laughs> I know, but in this more serious moment, he's fantastic. There's um, there's a, 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 a t he's in a TV show called um, Mob City. Mm -hmm. It's like a mini series, and he plays a failed stand-up comedian who's now like, a, like a runner for the mob. And it's like he's like really dramatic and really tragic in that. <laughs> if you want to oh, see Simon amazing. Pegg, if you want to see Simon Pegg really beaten up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's all. I, I, yeah, I, I'm sure he would have been fine. Yeah. Uh, the other thing with this film is you can actually look for. Lots of references to different films. They're they're purposely put in there. I mean, you mentioned the one "There Is No Spoon." Mm -hmm. That was purposely thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> and there's and some then, of the Zulu stuff, but I think yeah. there's a whole lot more in there. Oh, there's so. lots of there's lots of Evil Dead vibes floating around mm. from the cellar full of the the bodies and things and their previous meals. <laughs> But yeah, as a first feature, I have to say it's incredibly impressive. Yeah, mm. sure. And I think I think The Descent is probably a better film, but I think I I enjoy Dog Soldiers more. Probably because the The Descent is entirely humorless and leaves you feeling utterly d destroyed <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're better films. They're different. They're very different. Um, this oh, yeah, yeah, very different. This, but he, this I think is a fun horror it's not a you know one that's going to depress you at the end like oh, the yeah. descent no but um but so... I, I think it's interesting though because he obviously i think um uh neil marshall obviously has a great love of the aliens franchise and you can very much see the impact of aliens on this film and then mm -hmm. the descent has very much got an alien vibe yeah. yeah well this has got an aliens vibe in the you got the soldiers versus mm -hmm. the aliens so to speak and then even his uh, technique of having multiple werewolves was James Cameron's technique of having yep. multiple aliens. It was only really six. So <laughs> you wouldn't know it watching the film. No. 400, <laughs> at least. Ah, <laughs> uh, good choice. I'm, I was happy. I was very happy to watch it again, to pull out the old uh, the DVD, because I can, I can never get it on Blu-ray. It's a, it is a, a tricky movie to find. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with this one, yeah. Uh, uh, brought it up because it's one I enjoy watching time and time again. Dog Soldiers. And now, dear listener, on Halloween Horror Week, we're going to take you on a little trip to a little house. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Pop Culture. I've been Scott. I'm still Jason. And I'm still Monica. 